Hey guys, it's Hogan here, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to create a professional website using hosting as website builder. And I think it's the perfect WordPress alternative because it's so intuitive to use, as well as being extremely easy to manage while still allowing to create really beautiful and functional websites without any coding experience. Now, personally, I still love WordPress and I still use WordPress, but at the same time, it can be quite overwhelming, especially for people who just require a simpler solution unless you do want to create a advanced type of website, such as a listing site, for example, a real estate listing site or a car listing site, or maybe a forum or maybe an advanced sort of e-commerce website, then you don't really need WordPress. And I think hosting as website builder is going to be a perfect option for a lot of you. And I'm going to be going through everything that you need to know from choosing the right plan, getting a free domain name, creating a free professional email, as well as choosing a suitable template for your business and customizing a site from the layout, design, changing the colors and the fonts. I'll also show you guys how to add important features for your website, such as a contact form, a map, how to add in a language selector so people can translate your website, adding an appointment function so people can book directly, as well as adding a blog so you can create content and e-commerce functionality so you can sell stuff online whether that be a physical product or digital or maybe a service. So there's a lot that we're gonna be covering in this video and it is gonna be quite long, but I've also added the contents and the topics that we're gonna be covering in the description below with the relevant timestamps so you can skip to any section that you need. And if you have any questions, you can also drop it in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So yeah, I'll see you guys on the inside. So to get started with this tutorial, you can click the link down below and that's going to take you to this exclusive hosting and discount page. And from here, we can navigate to the top, click on hosting and then select web hosting. So you may be wondering what's the difference between web hosting from the website builder to WordPress. So actually they're pretty much exactly the same thing, except on the web hosting page, you're able to choose a plan which is suited for your needs and your budget. So the main difference between these four plans is that the single plan, you're only able to create one website only. However, with the other plans, you're able to create 100 websites, 100 websites, and 300 websites hosted under just one account. So basically you can have your website, your friend's website, and your client's website all hosted under that account. And over here with the single shared plan, you do not get the free domain included. So the other plans, you do get the free domain included as well as the free domain privacy. And from here, you'll be able to see that it does include the WordPress. So you're able to install WordPress and create a WordPress website if that's what you wanna do. But in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to use the hosting and website builder and all these plans will include it. So the main difference here is that with the business plan, you'll have the e-commerce features. So you're able to create an online store as well as the cloud startup that is included as well. So if you don't really want to create an online store, you don't want to sell anything, you just want to create a simple website, for example, like a restaurant website or a portfolio, I recommend generally the premium plan for most people. Um, it's definitely great to get started with um, because it's relatively affordable. You do get the free domain. Now, if you want to create like an online store or if you want a little bit more increased performance in terms of website load times and things like that, as well as daily backups, then you can get the business plan. And if you just want the best, um, perhaps you have an existing business already, then you can go ahead and get the cloud startup. You also get the priority chat support, which basically gives you access to a faster chat response time in terms of the customer service. So over here, we're gonna go ahead and use the business plan because I wanna show you guys how to add the e-commerce features uh, for those of you who wanna add an online store. So scrolling down over here, you'll need to choose a period. So generally I do recommend 12 months or more because you do get a sort of bigger discount. If you go month to month, it's actually quite expensive. So 16 times 12, $192. Um, and it's not really worth it because if you actually get the 12 month plan, then it's going to be around, around $65 and even less with my coupon code. So the main difference between the 12 months and the longer periods is that it renews at a much lower rate. So for example, after four years, it's gonna renew at $9 per month, at $10 per month and $12 per month. But all these plans will actually include the free domain for the first year. 
So for this tutorial, I'm just going to go for the 12 month because it's just a tutorial. So I don't really need it after this video. So over here, you can create your accounts and here you can either put in an email and create it, or you can log in via Facebook or Google. Scrolling down over here, you can choose a payment method, choose your country. And then I do also have an additional coupon code, which is going to help you save just a little bit more money. So you can type in Hogan Chua and then click on apply. And that's going to bring the price down to $59 or so. So what I'm going to do is just enter in my card details and then I'll see you guys on the other side. So the first thing that you'll need to do once your account has been created is you'll need to verify your email address. So head to your email that you signed up with and then click on verify email. So once you've verified your email, then you can scroll down and then click on setup. And then here we can click on start now. And I'm going to select, I don't want a personal like experience. And then over here, we're going to select create a new website, click on select. And then we're going to be using the hosting a website builder with AI. We're going to click on select. Now, if you do want to create a WordPress website, I do have a different tutorial and I'll link it in the description below. So we're going to go ahead and click on select. And then over here, because we have purchased the one year plan, then I'm going to claim my free domain name, which is my website name. We're going to click on select. And then here we can enter in a domain name. So for example, I might do creative demo 23. And then over here, we can click the drop down to select the extension. So generally I do recommend the .com extension. And then we can click on search to see if that is available. Now, sometimes it may not be available. For example, if you pick google.com or youtube.com, that is obviously taken. So you do need to be a little bit more creative. It could be your name or your brand name. And then if it is available, then we can go ahead and click on continue. Now, if you want to choose a domain name later, then you can use the free temporary domain name and click on select and then purchase it later. But I'm going to go ahead and purchase this one right now and click on continue. So over here, we're just going to enter in our details. So once you've entered in your details, click on finish registration. So once the registration is complete, hosting, will send you an email to verify your contact information for your new domain name that you just registered. So click into the email and scroll down a little bit and we can validate the domain name. Okay. So that has been successfully verified. So once you're done, you can go back to hosting and you should be redirected over here. So over here, we have two options to create a website. One, which is using the AI website builder, which is new and two using the pre-made templates. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create it using the pre-made templates, because in my opinion, it is just a lot better, but I'll show you guys how the AI website builder actually works. So just in case you guys want to use it. So we're going to click on start creating and I'll just show you guys quickly. So just enter in your brand name. You can choose your website type. And even if you choose like a business website, you can add an online store and blog on later as well. So I'm just going to click on this one and here we can describe the project. And then over here we can click on create a website. Okay. So based on what I inputted, this is the website that they created for me. So it's just a very simple and basic layouts. And they've also added some content there as well. So you can choose from the different templates over here. You got three different types and you can choose the different styles. You can change the font and you can also change the different colors as well as clicking on the pages and you can add on a blog page or portfolio or online store from here. And then once you are ready, you can click on continue. So this is going to take us to the hosting as website builder, which I'll show you how to use in a minute. And you can start designing your website like that. However, I'm going to show you guys how to choose a template. So we're going to go back over here on the top left. So click on the arrow and then we're going to go to click on the choose a template. So over here, we have dozens of fully customizable website templates. They look really good. So you can go through each of these ones. And let's say, for example, you like a template, you can click on preview and see how that is suited for your business. If you like it, you can click on start building straight away. If you don't, you can go back over here. If you want to create like an e-commerce site, you can also choose an e-commerce template as well. Now it doesn't necessarily mean 
that you can't create an e-commerce site if you pick the other ones, you can easily add that on later. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna click on blank templates and I recommend that you do the same as well because it's just a lot easier to build starting using the blank templates and to show you guys how the sort of builder actually works. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to create the website using a blank business template. So you can click on select template and we're gonna click on change template. So it's gonna remove the um, previous website that we generated with the AI builder. So over here we have our website, right? So everything is just showing like placeholder content at the moment. So I wanna walk you through the basic interface now over the top here, you're gonna see a desktop icon and a mobile icon. So if you click on the mobile icon, this is basically adjusting the layout specific for mobile devices. So you'll need to do this later once you've finished creating your website on the desktop version. Here is your undo and then you've got the redo buttons. Here we can click on save. So generally it auto saves every few minutes. You can click on preview. You can take your website live by clicking over here. And if it is live, um, you can click on update website. On the left hand side, you can click on the plus icon and this is all the different elements that you can drag and drop in to your website. And everything is just drag and drop, which I'll show you in a second. Here is gonna be your pages and navigation. So this is where you add your pages and configure your navigation menu. Here we've got the website styles. So you can change the colors for your website universally, as well as the text your button style, as well as animations. Here we've got the blog. So you can click on start a blog, which I'll show you how to add a little bit later and an online store. And then you've also got the AI logo maker as well as the AI writer and the AI heat map, which I'll show you um, during the tutorial. Here we've got the analytics. So this is gonna be your page views, basically how many visitors are coming to your website. Here we've got the languages, so essentially what this does is you're able to create a language selector. So for example, if you want your website in a different language, you can create that um, like by selecting your starting language um, and then you can select a language that you want your website to be translated in and you'll need to manually translate it, which I'll show you um, a little bit later towards the end of the video. Here we have a search function. Here we've got a feedback so the website builder is actually quite new and they're always improving. So you can submit your feedback as well as featured request. Here we've got the help articles and documentation. So if you need any sort of step-by-step uh, -step instruction, you can see if you can find the information there. But generally I'm gonna cover most things of this builder. So let's go back over here. Here we have the website settings. So I'll talk about this towards the end of the video. And lastly, on the bottom right-hand side, you've also got this chat bubble. So this is the customer service. You're able to actually contact them if you do need any help. So I find that really, really helpful because everything is very, very integrated within the hosting and website builder. Unlike if you're building a WordPress website, it isn't as integrated. So it's very, very helpful if you do need any help. So let's go ahead and start building our website. So over the top over here, we've got the header section. And on the bottom, we've also got the footer section. So I'm gonna work our way down towards the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we can click here to the header, and then you can click on change logo. And then over here, we can change our logo. So we can click on replace image. And then if you have an image, we're gonna upload the files like that. And I'm actually going to upload all the images that they have already. So we're gonna upload these and we're gonna upload this image over here like that and then click on open. So I don't have to upload them one by one later. So from here, I'm going to select this logo. So as you can see, this logo is transparent. So I actually created my logo on canva.com. So if you don't have a logo, I recommend going there to create a logo. Now, if you only have a free account, you'll be able to download the logo, but it's not gonna be a transparent PNG file. It'll have a background. So if you um, don't have a pro account and you download uh, the one that has a background, you can go to a website called Remove BG to remove your background and you're gonna get your logo in a transparent file. Then you can upload it here like that. And over here, we can scroll down, we can change the logo width. So you can change the size of that logo. So let's just say for example, 124 or 125, something like that. 
And here we can scroll down. You can also change the logo position. We can click on the layout over here and you can also make the header a sticky. So what that basically does is if we click on the preview and if we scroll down, then the header is going to stick there like that. So we're going to click on back to editor. So it does provide a great user experience if that's what you want. Um, sometimes people don't like that. So you can, depending on what you want, so we can click on change logo layouts and you can disable it if you need to change the menu position. You can also change the menu items spacing, which is the spacing between the navigation menu. So let's just say, for example, we update it like that. Okay. Or we want to be a little bit closer. I'm just going to stretch it to the max. And the padding over here is going to be the spacing of your header. So we can minimize it a little bit, maybe like 24 pixels like that. And then we can click on save. So you can also change the header background color as well. So here, what we could do is we can change the header background color. So if you want to change it to a dark gray color, you can, um, but you do have to disable the transparent header. Okay. And you can also change the header text color, but I'm just going to keep it as default because I think it's quite simple and nice and having a white background, um, it's very, very visible, um, in terms of your menu items like that. And if we scroll down over here, we're going to edit the hero section of your website. If we hover over here, it's going to highlight in blue and that's going to be a section. It's going to highlight in blue section, new section and a new section there like that. So first of all, we're going to change the background so you can click and change background and you can change it to a different color or you can change it to a different image. So we can click on add image and we can choose an image that we like click on select, or you can go to free images over here and it's going to pull images from the Unsplash website. But generally I do recommend getting your own custom images done. It just makes the website look a lot better. So let's just say, for example, I like this image. I'm going to select it. Okay. And here we have the overlay opacity. So this basically adds a sort of dark overlay opacity, basically helping us enhance our text a little bit better. So if we, click on the text. You want to make sure that your text is visible. So we can click on edit text, change the text to a white text like that. And then you can also change it for this one over here, edit text, change it to white as well. So it's a very simple sort of uh, word editor. So let's say for example, you want to change the size. You can change it quite easily. You can make a bold, you can change the alignment of it. You can also add a link. So for example, if you want to link something, you can select the text that you want to link, link it up like that and put in the URL. Okay. So very, very simple to do. And let's just say, for example, we want to edit the text up here, edit text. So let's just delete it. Let's just do hi, um, Hogan like that. And then if you want to move it, all we need to do is just click it and just select it and drag and drop. So very, very simple to do. And we can click on the background over here. What I'm going to do actually going to click on the header, click on change logo, and I'm actually going to go and disable the transparent header. Okay. Let's just move this back to the white one. Make sure we save that because I think we didn't save it before and close it like that. Okay. So I'm going to make this text just a little bit bolder to make it maybe more visible. And here we have a button, so you can drag and drop the button anywhere like that. Let's just say, for example, you want to add another element so we can click on plus. Let's add another button next to the first one like that. And we can align it like that. Maybe move it over a little bit. Okay. So it's very, very easy to use. And if you want to make the section a little bit um, bigger, so you can click over here on the section height and just drag it down a little bit like that. And that's going to make the sort of spacing a little bit bigger. And if you want to edit the button, click on edit button here, we can change the text. So for example, you can link it to a specific page. So for example, links to your pages here. Okay. So you can link it to your about page, contact page. So any page that you create, you can link it and find it down here. Let's say, for example, you want to link it to an external link. So you can click on web address and you want to link it to YouTube or something like that. You can paste the URL in here and you can also link it to a section. 
So a section is basically, um, as I explained before, section over here, section over here. Let's just say, for example, we want to link it down here because you have a contact form or something like that. Then we can click on this section and then we can click on edit section. And then for the anchor, so the anchor tab here, we can add a name for that. So it could be like bottom or it could be like contact. Anything you want to name it, we can click on close, come back over here, click on this button, edit button. And then here we can link to the section, okay? And then here we can select the section. So let's click on save and preview. So if someone clicks on that, it's gonna scroll down to the section. Let's head back to the editor. And then over here, let's say for example, you want to click on edit button. Let's say for example, um, let's say you're a restaurant or something like that. You can also do a file download. Okay, so you can select file download and select file. And let's say for example, you have a menu PDF ready. So we can select it. And basically once that is done, we can just close it and save it. So that allows people to download that PDF. So for example, if you have your menu or if you have an ebook, um, doesn't matter what you have, uh, it allows people to click it and download it onto their computer. So I'm actually gonna perhaps just drop the opacity down a little bit. I think it's a little bit too dark. Okay, you can also click on fixed background. So that's gonna be like a parallax scrolling effect. So that's really cool. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is how do you add pages on the top? So click on the layers over here, like the layers icon. And let's say you wanna add a new page. So just click on add page and you can select an empty page or you can select a sort of pre-created template page. So let's just say for example, you wanna add a services page and let's just select this one over here. It's gonna create a new page and here we can change the name. So you can create it, you can call it services or you can call it a specific service. For example, if you're a carpet cleaning business, it could be like um, carpet cleaning. It really depends on what you wanna do. And here I wanna make sure the URL is just my um, title. And then you can also hide the page if you don't want it to display on the navigation menu on the top. Perhaps you have a separate product page and you don't wanna list it on the top you can hide it. Here we can click on social image and you can add an image over here. So when people share your website or this page, then it's gonna show that image. So for example, we add this image in here. Okay, if someone shares it on like Facebook or like Twitter or like WhatsApp, it's gonna show this image, which I think is really cool. And you can click on save. You can also set a password if you wanna limit access um, for a specific page. So let's go ahead and click on save. Now, if you want to rearrange it, you can click on this and just drag it like this. Okay. And if you want to create, let's say like another page, we can do that. Let's create a, another maybe projects page or something. Let's just select that one. And then let's just delete this one. Click on save. So let's just say, for example, you want to create a drop down menu. So let's drag this and we can drop it into the services like that and that's gonna create a nice drop down. Okay, so the outer section is just covering it, but as you can see, it drops down like that. All right, so it's very, very simple to do. And that's the basics of creating your pages and editing the navigation menu. So let's just click on save and let's head back to our homepage and I'll show you guys how you can add a new section. So scrolling down over here, you can click on plus section to add a new pre-created section Obviously you can add a blank section if you want to. I'm just gonna select perhaps maybe this one over here, okay? Let's just click on that one and you can click into it, um, edit the text and change it um, however you want. So let's just say for example, we change this text over here, edit text, and it could be like about me or something like that. And then here, instead of clicking edit text, I'm gonna show you the AI assist tool. So we can click into that and here we can actually ask the AI assist tool to help us create content for our website. So you can take inspiration from it. And let's say for example, I'm going to go to chat GPT and then just copy this. And let's go back over here, paste this in. Okay, so I told it to write a paragraph for an about section for a website for a freelance web designer. So we'll click on generate text. And you can use chat GPT as well. I normally do use chat GPT 
I find the answers to be a little bit more precise, um, a little bit more, uh, maybe perhaps written a little bit better. So I'm just gonna copy this one, um, but you can use the AI assist tool um, that you find on Hostinger as well. So let's click on edit text and perhaps I'm just going to select that one and I'm gonna paste and match style. Okay, so what you can do is just format everything, make sure everything is well formatted. So let's say for example, let's take that last line like that and that's looking good. So perhaps we do wanna move this up a little bit like that. Maybe let's move this text up a little bit too like that. Maybe move this one a little bit closer. Okay, so I think that's good enough, but just make sure everything is aligned. As you can see, everything is aligned to the lines like that with the snap um, grids. And if you do wanna turn off the snap grids, you can do that. Um, I do think you go to the edit section and you've also got the layouts and you can disable the snap to guides and things like that. But generally I find it really, really helpful. Um, otherwise everything's gonna be really messy in terms of alignment. So here we can change this text over here, edit text. Just paste that in like that, and that's looking pretty good. If you wanna change the image, click into it, change image, um, replace image. So it's very, very easy to do. And let's say for example, you want to delete it, just delete it. You can add perhaps a video as well. So you can drop in a video like that. You can you know drop anything that you want, very, very easy to edit. So if you wanna add a video, click on edit video, just upload your video to YouTube and then all you need to do is copy the URL and paste it in here. And you can easily just resize everything like that, okay? So let's just say, for example, we just um, undo that, undo that, undo that. And I want to change that background, oops, change that image, replace this image with something that is related. So perhaps this one over here, click on select and let's just align everything properly. So another thing that you can do is you can also delete a specific section. Like for example, just clicking on delete. Let's say for example, you wanna move different sections. You can also click on the move up and move down arrow. So for example, move it down and that's gonna move it down. Let's just move this one down like that. And it works like that, right? So very, very simple to use. Let's just move this one up and let's just move this back up again. So I'm gonna quickly sort of create the rest of the sections and you can see how easy it is to actually generate and create a layout um, by using the hosting and website builder. Okay, so that's taking around five minutes for me to just really change the layout of the services and add a portfolio um, section to my website. And what I'm gonna show you right now is how to edit the footer section. So a really common thing that people have on the footer is a social links. So for example, they can click on add element and editing the footer is pretty much the same as editing anywhere else on the website. So you can drag any of these elements on there. So for example, social icons, you can drop that under contact us like that, and then click on edit social icons. So from here, you can either delete it, or if you want to add a new link, you can add a new link, for example, a YouTube channel URL. If you want to edit the URL here, click on the settings, click on edit, and then just paste in your Facebook profile URL, click on save, and then you're good to go. Okay, so very, very simple. Here we can click on style and you can change the icon color to white to make sure that's visible. 
If it's a white background, then you might change it to a dark color so it's visible and we can close that. So another really common thing that a lot of footers actually have is their sort of navigation uh, menu pages. So how do you add that in here? So all we need to do is we can, for example, we just drop in a text element or we can just duplicate it from here and just add it. So for example, click on edit text and then over here, we can just delete this one. Let's just say, for example, about, then we have, let's say we have a services page and let's just say we have a portfolio like that. And you can, as you can see, when we hover over here, the paragraph spacing, we can click it and we can drag it to reduce it, to set it to something like 16 and maybe do the same for that one there like that. Okay, so if you wanna add more pages, then you can do, do that. So to link it, all you need to do is to select the text and then click on the link icon. And then over here, we can link to our pages, for example, about, and if you want to open it in new tab, that may be useful if it's an external link, for example, link to another sort of website, then you can select it, click on save, and then we are basically linked it. Okay, so very, very simple to do. Just make sure you arrange everything properly on your footer section. To change the background of the footer, we can click the footer and just click on change background. So you can either change the color of it. So for example, let's change it to maybe like a blue color or any color that you wish. And you can also change it to an image. So for example, you can upload an image and you can have an image background as well. And here we can also click on the anchor. You can also name this as, for example, footer. If you wanna create a button, so allowing people to scroll down to your footer section, you can do that as well. So another thing you can do is also hide the footer. So this is useful if you wanna hide it on a landing page. For example, you might just wanna have a, for example, like subscribe to email opt-in on that page. You don't want a footer, then you can hide it. You can also hide it if you wanna create an advanced footer you can basically use a section and create a custom footer as well. And then basically hide the main footer and then you can use that section as your footer. So it's very, very flexible and also very easy to edit because it is pretty much the same as editing any section on your website. Once you've finished creating the layout for each of your pages, you do wanna check the mobile responsive settings as well. So we wanna make sure we click on the mobile and you wanna check your layout. So sometimes you will need to rearrange the layout in order for it to be fully 100% responsive and ensuring that it does look good for mobile. So sometimes you may need to move things, for example, uh, this one over here, what we do, I think this is actually part of, uh, meant to be up here. So let's just drag it up here like this. And let's put this back into the middle like that, scrolling down over here. Okay, so we do need to move this one down a little bit, down there. Okay, so that's pretty much good to go. So the layout that you arrange in the mobile settings, it's going to only um, be on mobile devices. So if we click back onto the desktop, then it's gonna retain the same layout. Um, but if we click back on mobile, it's gonna retain the layout that we set in here. So one thing that I do wanna show you guys is a call now button. So for example, when someone clicks on the contact us uh, button, when we're on the preview page, it does scroll down to the contact section down here. But what I wanna show you is I wanna show you how to add a call now button. So this is very useful if you're a local business. Um, so people can actually just click on the call now button and that's gonna redirect them to the phone screen. So to do that, what we could do is first of all, click the button and we're gonna duplicate it. And here we're gonna have one of the original buttons and I'm gonna set the visibility. So click on the eye icon and I wanna hide it for the mobile. Okay, and one of them is um, visible for desktop. And then this one over here, we're gonna set it to be visible only for mobile and hide it for desktop. Okay, let's just stack it over there and click on edit button. And then for the button text, we can change it to 
call now. And then for the link to, we can do web address. And then here for the link, we can do TEL, short for telephone, do colon. And then over here, we can just type in our phone number. So for example, 9000 000. And then over here, we can click on save. So let's click on preview. Okay, so the contact us, it's gonna scroll down. Now, if we click on the mobile devices, let's go over here, click on the call now, then that's gonna redirect directly to people's call screen. And all they need to do is just click on the call and start calling. So it's very, very useful for local businesses. And let's click back to the editor. Let's click back to the desktop and we can click on the contact page. I do wanna quickly show you um, the contact form. So let's click into the contact form. You can click into the edit form and then you want to make sure that you set in your correct email. So this is where the email notifications will be sent. And you can also click view form submissions. So you can see all the submissions here. You can also navigate to the settings here and click on form submissions as well. And for your contact page, you can easily add a map if you want to as well. So for example, add, click on the plus icon, drop in a map module like that. And all you need to do is click on edit map and then set in your address. So once that is all good, we can click on save and head back to our home page. So what I want to show you now is the website styles. So this is where you change the colors as well as the text and buttons and the animations universally for your website. So once you actually change the colors here, it's going to apply to the rest of your website. So what I've actually done is I have applied a bit of color to my website to just show you how it basically works. So let's just say, for example, as you can see, I've added some pink or it's kind of like a pinkish type of orange to some of the buttons as well as the hover color. Okay. And you're going to see that color here. So let's just say, for example, you know, one day I decide I want to change my brand values and I just want to change my colors. So perhaps let's just say, for example, change it to, let's say, Okay, so maybe not this one, not this one. Uh, perhaps let's change it to this orange. So let's just copy that color code, come back over here. And instead of going to each individual button and changing the color up here, what we can actually do is go over here and click on change and click on select. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in my new color code. And then from here, just click on accept. And then as you can see, it has changed that color universally, right? So you don't have to edit each individual one and that's gonna save a ton of time. And then you've also got the text. So with the text over here, you can also change it universally. So let's just say, for example, I wanna change it to perhaps this one over here. And then all the changes that you've made will be deleted. We'll have to click on reset and that's gonna change the font for the entire website like that. Okay, so you can also play around with it by clicking on edit styles. So sometimes you will need to edit the heading sizes, um, the default sizes and things like that over here. Okay, so you can do that and let's go back over here. So sometimes you may need to rearrange the text as well because the sizing is a little bit different for the fonts as well. So you can click on the buttons as well and you can change the default style of the button. So for example, you want to make it rounded, you can click on this one and it's going to make all the buttons on your website rounded. So it's just a very quick way of editing your website. You can also add in animations uh, for your different elements on your website universally as well. So the next thing I want to show you guys is how to add in your blog post. So this is a great way to create content for your website to actually get traffic to your site so people can purchase what you have to offer because you're able to create content that people are searching for on Google or other search engines. And if people come to read your blog post, then they can see maybe perhaps you offer some other services and they can purchase from you like that. So it's one of the best ways to actually get traffic to your website. So let's go ahead and click on start blog. So on the left hand side, you have the set of pre-made blog posts that have been already added. So what we're going to do is you can click over here and you can click on edit to start editing your blog post. So starting from the top over here, we're going to click on change post title and here we're going to enter in our post title. 
So I've generated some content from ChatGPT. So I'm just gonna copy in the title here. And here, let's just paste that in. Over here, you can put in a post description if you want to. This is gonna be a post URL. Generally, this is gonna be your title. And here we can add in an author. So for example, you can put in your name or perhaps an alias name, and you can set in a post date, or you can also schedule a post. So scrolling back up here, you're gonna see two tabs, the featured image. So this is where you can add the featured image for your blog post so that when you're displaying it on your homepage, it's gonna show this image. So let's just find a image. So perhaps let's just do this one over here, click on select. And then you can also click on categories and you can also add a category. So click on add category. So for example, let's just do travel, save it and then click on save. So from here, we can also click on edit blog header on the setting gear icon. Here, we can also change the visibility of what we wanna display. So for example, if you want to hide the description, you can hide it like that. You can also click on layout and you can also change the padding of the area. So let's just move it up a little bit, maybe 64. And then you can also add in a background I'm just gonna keep it as a very simple white background because I think that's just the best way to do it. Click on close. And then scrolling down here, you've got your sections again. So to edit your blog post, it's pretty much the same as editing any other page. For example, if we want to click into here, this is just a placeholder image. We can click on change image and replace image. I'm just gonna select the same one over here, select. And then we can just close that. Here we can stretch out the section height a little bit. So just to scroll down and perhaps just pull it down slowly like that. Okay. And then here we can start adding in our post content. So you can click into this text module. And what I'm gonna do is just move it in a little bit. Okay, because I don't want my text going from left to right all the way. It's just a little bit harder to read. So I wanna pull it sort of uh, aligned with this image. And then you can click on edit text. And then from here, you can just type in your text or paste in the text that you have written. So let's just say, for example, we have this text over here. Let's just copy that over. And I'm gonna paste a match style, just like that. And then from here, perhaps you could just change and format everything so it looks really good. So perhaps let's do heading three, maybe a little bit too big. Uh, let's just do heading four. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Um, you can definitely play around with the sizing as well. And let's say, for example, you have a image that you want to add in. So we could click on the plus and then add in a gallery or let's just add in an image like that. And we could just drop it in there, put it in the middle. Uh, perhaps you can make it a little bit bigger if you want to as well. And then let's just drag the section height and let's click on change image, replace image and select this image over here. And then let's just close that. Okay, so that's just the basics of it, adding text and adding images. You can also add in video or anything in your element section. And you'll need to basically um, add more section height if you wanna add more content. So once you're done, you can click on save. And if you wanna display your blog post, so let's click on the blog page and you're gonna notice your blog posts are uh, displaying over here. So if you wanna display your post on your homepage, click on your logo over here, taking you to the homepage. Let's just scroll down a little bit and let's just say, for example, you want your blog post to appear perhaps just below my work and you click on add section. And then here, just click on blog and then you can select the blog template. So click it and that's gonna add it in, okay? So from here, you can click on edit blog list and you can also change the post per page. Let's do like three posts per page and perhaps three columns like that. And then that's gonna display your blog post on your homepage. So you can also click on the style and basically edit what you want to display and don't want to display. So let's hide the description. And you can also show perhaps just a specific category as well. And you can also play around with the different background colors and images. So I wanna quickly show you guys how you can add an online store to your website. So you can click on the cart icon and click on add store. And they have some pre-made sort of uh, products which have been added already. So what we're gonna do first of all is click back over here. 
okay, on the cart icon and then click on manage store. And then over here, we can put in a store name. So I'm just going to put it as Hogan store. So you can put it as your name and or your business name, click on continue, select your store country. So I'm just going to do Australia for this example, click on continue. And over here on the left hand side, this is where you add in your products, your categories, manage your orders, as well as appointments and set in discounts and coupon codes here in the store settings. So this is where you'll need to enter in your store details and comp company information. And if you want to receive payments, okay, so once you've actually signed up for PayPal or Stripe, then you can actually connect it to your store. And then all the payments will be sent to your PayPal account or your Stripe account. And then from there, you can send the, the money to your local bank account. Okay, so you can go ahead and go through the store settings over here and fill in the details. So for the shipping, so I'll just quickly show you guys how to set in the shipping. So this is going to be your default local country and you can click into it. And then from here, we can scroll down. You can add in the countries here or you can add in different zones later. So we can click into the regular shipping option and here we can set in a rate. So for example, $10 and we can just label this as standard standard shipping and then you can also click on add let's say for example you want to add a free shipping method so we could add an option and then we could label this as free shipping and then this one is going to be zero dollars and we're going to set in a condition so you can set in a condition here for example the minimum order price is over 100 and then the customer will get free shipping. Okay, so it's very, very simple to set in the shipping zones. So you can click on back over here and you can add as many zones as you want. So let's click back again. And scrolling down over here, you've also got the checkout. So you can customize your checkout field and what you want to show on the checkout page. Click back over here. On the emails tab, you can basically edit the sort of content on your email notifications. Click on back over here. Uh, this is where you add in your taxes and invoices. So let's go ahead and add in a few products. So click on products. And here are the ones that have been added already. So if you want to delete it, you can click on the three dots and just click on delete like that. And you can also click into it and edit it straight away. So click on edit and we can change it. So let's just say, for example, we're going to sell some aluminium uh, luggages. Okay, so here we're going to delete this image. Just add in our images over here. Open, scrolling down. Here we can add in a subtitle. So this could be a sub brand or it could be, let's say, for example, it could be checked in so for example this luggage over here is for check-in only and then for the ribbon so this is where you could put in like new or you could put in like sale you can also do something like for example top rated so let's just say top top rated like that and then over here you can enter in a product description and you can format it however you want we can scroll down over here here we can set in a price for the product. So you could do like 599 and then discount price is maybe 499. You can also add in a SKU and set in the product weight. And then you can also track your quantity as well. So let's just do 50. Scrolling down over here, if you have variations, you can add the variations here and then for your categories. So for your categories, you'll have to add it in, in the categories page first um, before assigning it. So click on save. Let's head to categories and then add category. And let's just label this as luggage and assign the products and save. So categories is important, especially if you have a lot of products that you want to sell, click on save. And over here, let's go and view our site. So let's go back to editor. And then by adding the store, you've added a store page up here in your navigation menu and here is your product and you've got your top rated uh, sort of ribbon there click into that product so you may need to actually click on preview first to
to actually click into that product. So click on preview and then let's navigate into the product. Okay, and this is what it basically looks like on your product page. Let's head back to editor and you can also click on edit section. So this is where you can change the layout of your product as well as the style. So for example, you can change the text color. You can also um, edit how many products you want to display, edit the add to cart uh, button, add to bag button. So you can enable it like that. And then you can also change the color of it as well in terms of the button color and the shape. And here we've got the ribbons. So for example, if you want to change the ribbon color, we can change it to maybe something that stands out a little bit more, perhaps this orange like that. And then you can also scroll back up. Okay. And once you're done, you can just click on close like that. Okay. So let's just say, for example, you want to add your products to your homepage. So we can go ahead and go to our homepage. And let's say you want to add it perhaps below this blog post, add section, click on online store. And then here you can add a product list or a single product like that. Or you can also do it another way where it's, you can add a section and let's add a blank section and we can add an element and then we could add a add to bag element and then click on edit button. And then here we can link that button to a specific product. So when people click on that bag, then it's going to add that specific product that you set in here to the cart. So for example, this is the button and this basically just allows you to really customize how you want to design your section. So for example, if we add, let's say an image and change image, replace image, product images here, upload files. Uh, let's just say we add the suitcase image, select, and then this is just going to allow us to really design a customized sort of page like that. Okay. So that's just an example of how you can actually do it. Um, I'm not going to go too much, um, into detail here. So let's just say, uh, we are good to go. Let's just click on save. Now I want to show you guys how we can add appointments. So let's head back to our store. So click on manage store. And then what you can do is you can go to appointments. So here we can enable our appointments. So this is really great if you want to offer, for example, consultation calls and you can basically over here, set your availability, click on edit and you can edit the availability. So your times and the days you can delete it as well. So for example, something like that, click on save. And once you've set in your availability, we can go to our products and we can add another product. So you can also add in digital products. For example, if you want to sell eBooks, you can do that. If you want to sell services, for example, web design services, you can do that. You can also allow donations. And here I'm just going to show you guys how to set up the appointment. So click on appointment. Okay. So here we could do something like consultation call, cool. and then we could do like a subtitle. So maybe like perhaps one on one ribbon. Um, I'm not going to add anything description. You can add that in and for the price, you can set in a price. So for example, $200 and then here we can assign a category and scroll down. So you can set in a location. So online meeting via zoom. And then here we can set in duration. So for example, 60 minutes, click on save. And then let's head back to our homepage click on the store. And then here we have the consultation call and we can click into that. Sorry, let's just click on preview again. And then we can click into that. And then perhaps uh, once you've finished building a website, you can link your URL anywhere. Perhaps if you want to share it on social media, or if you want to share it on your YouTube videos, you can do that and people can add to bag. And then they can also set in the and choose the date so for example 20th 12 p.m and book okay so it is disabled right now but it's going to add it to your bag and then they'll need to pay for that amounts um and then you'll get an order notification and then you can contact your customer so that's just the basics of the online store i'll probably make a separate video on a just a more detailed um 
sort of tutorial showing you guys how to create a proper online store with it. The next thing that I want to show you guys is the SEO settings. So what we're going to do is click on the gear icon on the bottom left and then click on SEO. So SEO is short for search engine optimization. So essentially what we're doing here is optimizing our website so that it can rank on search engines such as Google. So here we can put in your business or your brand name. So I'm just going to put in my name and click on next step next here. And here you can enter in a page description. So I just created a short description about the page and this is basically going to help them generate the relevant keywords and SEO titles as well as the meta description. So once you're done, click on next. And here we can select our main keywords that we want to target for our website or our page. Here we're going to select website designer, freelance web designer, perhaps branding services. And let's just go ahead, website developer. Maybe let's just remove this one here, select that one, click on next. And then as you can see, they have generated a preview of what your homepage is going to look like in the search engines. So here we can actually edit it uh, depending on what you want. So freelance website designer and developer, branding services, bespoke packages. And instead of that last bit, I might just put my name or it could be your business name. And then here we've got the meta description. So the meta description is basically a short description that is going to be shown on Google or other search engines. So if that is good to go, then we're going to click on finish. If not, you can also edit that as well. Click on finish. So that is basically optimized uh, for your homepage. Now you will need to actually do this for the rest of your pages that you plan on ranking on Google. So you probably do want to do some keyword research and some tools that you can use is for example, Uber suggest to find out which keywords are sort of low competition and something that you want to rank for as well. So if we close over here, let's just head back over here. Let's click on SEO and scroll down. Okay. So over here we've optimized for the home page. Now for some of the other pages, especially your services pages and perhaps your blog post, then you want to optimize those. So some other pages such as your about and contacts, they're probably less important, but you still uh, would recommend you guys to do that as well. So you can go through each individual one and that is basically how to do SEO on the hosting and website builder. So the next thing that we can do is click on the gear icon and click on the general settings. So here is the fab icon. So it's basically this little logo, which is on your tabs. So this, it helps you sort of uh, allow your visitors to identify your website really easily. So you can click on update, add image. And I've created this image over here again on canva.com and just click on save changes, link preview image. So this is where you basically, when your visitors share your website, it's going to show this image over here. So you may want to select something. Uh, let's just say, for example, this one over here. Okay. And then scroll down. You can also add a cookie banner. You can also add the www dot prefix for your domain when you actually go live. So I'm going to keep it just as is for now. And then we can click on integration. So this is where you can connect your Google analytics, Facebook pixels and other apps as well. And analytics is where you can track your page views. SEO is uh, what I mentioned before. Your form submissions is basically where your contact form submissions will be listed. So here you can check out everything and that's about it. So if you do want to export it to WordPress, you can try using this feature over here, but I haven't tried it. I'm not sure how well it actually works. Let's click back over here. Okay. So let's click over here. So with the logo maker, you can check that out um, in terms of creating a logo directly on Hostinger. The AI writer is pretty much the same as the AI text, text assist tool uh, that we've used before. Okay. And here we've got the AI heat map. So the AI heat map is going to be generated um, after when you get traffic to your website and it's going to show you basically where is the most popular parts of your page. And it's going to give you just an idea of where people are looking and where people are focused on. So you can make sort of, um, you know, informed decisions in terms of how to lay out your page. For example, you know, making the more important uh, words or more important things that you want to tell your customers, 
make that um, basically you know front and center for your customer if needed. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up over here, and you've also got the language selector tool. Okay, so let's quickly walk you through this. So here you want to select your starting language, which is, for example, right now is English. So here we can click on that. And then the next step, you'll need to add your language. So we can click here and we can look for the language that you do want to have a translated website for. So let's just say, for example, this one over here, so Japanese, and you can click on add language. Okay. So right now we are currently editing the Japanese version of our website. So what you can do is let's say, for example, we click in and edit text. And then over here, we're going to paste in the Japanese, right? So let's just change the font size a little bit, 72, like that. Konnichiwa Hogan Des. Here we have the Japanese. And what you want to do is you want to um, translate each of the English words to Japanese. Okay, so it is, it is a bit of a manual process. Um, but that's going to basically allow you to have this language selector. So once you're done, make sure to click on save to save those uh, settings. Here we can change the language. So if you want to edit English, make sure you select that. If you want to change it in Japanese, make sure you select that. Okay. So that is pretty much it in terms of using the website builder. And once you have finished building your website, you can click on go live. And that is going to take your website live so you can share your URL with your visitors. So let's click over here and we can click on view site. Okay, congratulations. So we're pretty much finished with this tutorial. There is one last thing that I do want to show you guys and that is how to create a free and professional email in Hostinger. So for example, it's going to be something like hello at your domain.com or it could be like sales at your domain.com so it's very very simple to do so to create an email you'll need to log into your hosting a h panel area and then over here on the top click on emails and then here we can click on manage and then we're going to create a free titan email so we're going to scroll down here and click on select over here, we can enter in the name of our email. So this could be your personal name, or it could be info, it could be hello, it could be sales. In this case, I'm just gonna do hello. And then for the password, you wanna set in a password. And then scroll down here, you can enter in a password recovery email. So this can be your personal email. And then here, click on create a new account. And then that has been successfully created. So this is your email, this is your password, and to access your email, you can click on access webmail. And what you can do is you can pretty much just bookmark this page onto your browser. So then anytime you wanna check your email, you can log in. And then here, this is your inbox. And if you wanna send emails, you can click on compose. So what I wanna also show you guys is how to connect your hosting email to your Gmail account so that basically you can pretty much send, receive and manage all your email from your Gmail inbox. So this is going to be a similar setup process if you were to set it up with iCloud or any other email provider that is your default. So what we're going to do is head back over here to Hostinger, click on done. And then what you want to do is click on emails again, redirecting you back here, click on manage. And we just need to get some details to connect it click on the configure desktop app and then you should see details that look something like this. So if you can't find it and you don't see it, then you can contact the live chat support and tell them that you want to look for the uh, incoming server and the outgoing server email details and they'll point you in the right direction just in case sometimes the sort of, um, sort of buttons change and the locations of those change. So you can contact them. Now I'm going to show you guys how to set it up on Gmail. Now, if you do want to set it up on other email applications, then you can click on the need help and you can go through each of these different documentations to help set that up. So let's head back over here. And what we need to do is we need these details and we need to go to our Gmail account. And from here, click on the settings icon on the top right, click on see all settings, click on account and import. 
and then we want to check email from other accounts. So let's click on add mail account and then this should pop up over here. And what you need to do is to basically just paste in the email. Okay, so that's our domain. Our email is hello at ourdomain.com like that. Click on next and then import emails, click on next. And here, all we need to do is we need to copy over that email address again. So copy that, paste it in for our username. And the password is the password that we set in earlier when we created the email on Gmail. So for the pop server, we're going to head back over here and this is going to be the incoming server. So copy that and take note of the port. So it's 995, minimize that and just paste that in change it to 995. Here we're going to always use a secure connection, label incoming messages, and I'm not going to leave a uh, message on the server, uh, which is the original email, because I think they do have a limitation on the storage, um, but you can if you need to. And we're going to click on add account. Okay, so that has been added. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to send email as. So let's click on next. And then here we can change the name or we can keep it, click on next. And then over here, we're going to add in the details. So let's head back over here. So this is going to be the outgoing. So sending emails out, copy that detail there. And the port is going to be 465. So let's just copy that in, paste it in. And then we're going to paste in our email again. So at, paste that in put in the password, the port was 465, and then that SSL should be automatically selected. Click on add account. And then there's just one more step. So basically we just need to verify that um, to enable us to send email. So let's head back over here and let's go to our inbox in our hosting account. Now, sometimes it may already be um, working already and you can um, check your email directly here, but let's just go back over here and click here, and then we're going to activate or authorize it. So let's just click on that and confirm. Okay, so that is pretty much done. And if we head back to our Gmail account, so as you can see, it did eventually pull that email in. So all the emails will be forwarded directly to your Gmail account. And if we click on compose, okay, let's just do a quick refresh first, actually. So if we click on compose, what you're going to notice is that for the from, we can select it from this email or we can use our Gmail account like that. Okay. So you can also set it as a default. So let's just say, for example, go to settings, see all settings, accounts and import. And we can make this as our default email uh, when sending out any emails. So you can click on make defaults. And when replying to the email, um, I generally set it as reply from the same email address that the message was sent to like that. Um, or you can set this as the default like that. Okay. So that is pretty much it in terms of the email setup. And I think this concludes my tutorial and hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can drop it in the comment section below and yeah, see you guys in the next video.